experience with head coach Frank Martin. Coach, you want to start off with the opening statement and then we'll open the floor for some questions. Um, disappointed. We, we uh, defensively, you know, we just weren't very good. And, and the, the biggest struggle was our, which has been a struggle all year, uh, our inability to just guard the guy with the ball. That's, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's getting harder and harder to teach these days because, you know, I, I, I said this in my radio show here a minute ago, you know, when, when previous generations, you know, guys went and played for guys like Bob Hurley or Morgan Wooten or my high school coach, Shaky Rodriguez, and that's, uh, you know, that's how you learned. And, you learn before anything to guard the ball. And if you didn't guard the ball, you never played. And now in today's day and age at the grassroots level, uh, so if you don't play, you get mad. So they blame the coach. So you go to a new school and then you're on this AAU team and you don't play. So you get mad and you go to a new AAU team. And then the first time you ever hold people accountable, and I'm not blaming them. It's just a world that we've created. Uh, as soon as the first time players are ever held accountable now, uh, is when they get to college. And if the first time you're ever held accountable is when you're 18, 19 years old in college, it's not, it's, it's confusing. And, uh, but that's the world we've created. It's the, the world I'm, I'm, I signed up to manage and, uh, you know, but we got to guard the basketball, man. It's, it's plain and simple. It's, uh, if, if, if you don't, there, we have rules on what we do uh, defensively. And we were bad today. We, we didn't defend today. And, you know, we can sit around and say, well, we didn't have this guy, didn't have that guy, and that guy here, and there. all that's irrelevant. You still have to play with a competitive edge to give yourself a chance to win, and we didn't do that today. In terms of Matt, uh, having the type of performance that he did after going through everything mm -hmm. Yeah, I played him way too much today. I should have played him less, but you know, he said he was good, and I got wrapped up in in the moment uh, to to try and win the game today. Uh, uh, it, without diminishing Matt's effort and Matt's competitiveness, um, Matt wasn't very. He wasn't bad, but he was very average defensively today. Understandably so, when you spend ten days ten days in bed. Um, and, and you only practice once over a 10-day period, and it's for 30 minutes yesterday or 40 minutes, whatever it was. Um, but if, if I wore a uniform today and that guy had more enthusiasm and energy to win than I did, I'd, I'd, I'd go home and question why I'm playing basketball. That's, that's what I would do. And, and, that's, and that's not a shot at, at Matt, because Matt's the personality of our team. Matt, Matt brings that hard hat every single day. And he makes mistakes as he's trying to understand how to become a, a more complete player. But effort and grit is not one of them. And, uh, but, you know, it's, uh, um, they're good dudes, man. I don't dislike the guys on the team. I'm not trying to be negative. I'm just trying to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's disappointing to me that he brought more, uh, he, he, he was war, more willing to bring the fight to the fight than the other guys who, had nothing wrong with them, and that's uh, that's disappointing. Do you, find, do you find that? You know, you said like you had more energy after playing ten days in bed. Besides playing defensively, you know, they were able to stretch their lead a lot in those last few minutes. Um, this past stretch time, do you think like that's that was maybe where the majority of the problem lies, or like Matt was bringing where's the energy and you were seeing that lack of energy? No, yeah, I mean, you know, I had to play TJ and and Key on too many minutes today, and. You know they're, you know they took on the the responsibility. They were probably tired. That's I don't like playing tired players. Uh, uh, Matt had to play more than than I wanted him to play. You know, but it's it, I, why can't I get anyone else on our team to post with Matt's aggression? You know what I mean? I I, I mean I. Because we run plays to post other people up. Why can't they post with that aggression? Why? So Matt posts, we throw him the ball. 
why can't we ever throw it to the other guys? And and you know, and that's 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 uh, that's some of the challenges that we face. And um, you know, we we have to. Uh, you know, we, we got to stay patient and, and be at peace with what we're doing. Uh, today was a bad day. It's, um, uh, uh, um, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I'd probably say some stuff today that would rub people the wrong way. Uh, but I'm going to keep those ideas private to myself and my team right now. Um, uh, but just, you know, I, when, when, when I got asked to come here to represent this basketball program, and I stood in front of everybody for the first time, and I was asked, um, what's your team going to be like? I said, we're not getting out of the way. We got out of the way today. And that, that hurts my soul. And um, um, that, you know, losing is one thing. I was real proud of our guys the other day at Mason. Um, we got out of the way today. That, that hurts my soul. In terms of the point guard situation, nothing you haven't dealt with. I thought offensively they both tried to do what I asked them to do. I thought offensively they, you know, we had a stretch there where they popped the game open where TJ was at the point and we had a, two bad offensive possessions. But outside of that, I really can't. We, we missed a bunch of gimmies. I mean, to start the game, I mean, we, you know, we just kept missing gimmies. I mean, Key put himself in a place to, to make a bunch of little bunnies and he missed and, you know, and. Uh, we, we missed a bunch of little dinks around the basket, and that's after getting no production from our bigs offensively. Um, um, so offense wasn't the problem. I, I thought offensively our guys tried to do what I asked them to do. I thought offensively we took good shots. Uh, um, you know, but our problem wasn't the assists and the passing and the spacing and the decision-making. Our, our problem was the commitment to – you got the ball, and I'm in front of you. You see, when when I when, when I was a kid, I couldn't play a lick. And our high school coach, Shaky Rodriguez, he used to make you play one on one when you were 14 years old. He had two rules: don't quit, don't fight. If you quit, you're never allowed to come back. If you fight, you're going home for the day, and you're getting punished when you get back. And you have to learn how to guard. And what happens is now when you're unathletic and slow-footed like God blessed me to be. Uh, you had to learn how to use your mind and compete. And if I was playing against somebody that was just way better than me, I wasn't going to get out of the way, man. I was going to trip you, clothesline you. I was, you know, I wasn't just going to let you keep coming at me and letting you, I was going to let you know, like, oh, man, no. Next time you come, now you, we're both getting kicked out for the day because you're going to have to fight, but you're not going to embarrass me. And and I'm not saying that's the right way to do things, but, you know, you, you got to learn. There's a, there's a competitive edge that you have to have internally to be any good when you play sports, you know. Don't you think it's funny that in individual sports like tennis, Djokovic and Nadal are probably the least favorite players because they're so competitive that they're relentless and they're going to tell you what they think, and that's how they play. That's in an individual sport because you don't get to blame anybody on that one now, you know? And, and, you know, in team sports, people tend to hide because it's easy to say, well, look at him over there. I, I got my three baskets, look at him over there. And, and you know, uh, you know we, there, there's a competitive spirit that everyone has to have internally, um, you know? And, and, and to be good, you gotta have it. And it's that refusal to get beat. And we, we didn't play that way today. That's, you know, whether we got tired or not. I thought we tried late in the first half. Uh, but in the second half, we, we never put up a fight defensively. If that's something that needs to be learned, what is the best way to teach that, especially at this point in the year? That's the complicated part of the formula here, my man. Because I know how I used to teach it. But if I teach it like that in today's day and age, then there's all kinds of meetings and investigations into the coach being a bad human being. And, and so I, you know, I, I got a little saying that I live life by. It's I'm really, really stubborn, but I tr the older I get, the better I get and not letting me stubborn become stupid. 
And uh, uh, so I try to utilize my mind and my life experiences to adapt so I can teach uh, to get it to that place. And, um, you know, I say a story all the time. I, 10th grade, I show up at high school. And the old man that was a coach there before my coach, he'd sit in the half court line on the asphalt courts. And he sat in his chair. He's the winningest coach in the history of the state of Florida, Ben Schaefer. It's in school for 39 years. He'd say, we're going left-handed layups today. And you'd stand and shoot left-handed layups for 20 minutes. And the line started at half court. And the rebounder started at half court. And the guy, you dribbled with your left hand, you jumped off your right foot, and you didn't finger roll. You shot it off the backboard. If you did anything like that wrong or you missed, instead of going to the back of the line, you came and bent over right in front of him. He sat there with his wooden paddle with the holes in it and you got whacked. That's, that's how things were done back then. I'm not saying that's what we need to do now, but there's ways to change. And you know what I never needed back then? ADD medicine. I, my, my ADD, which I do have, was pretty damn good. You know, but, and I'm not saying that's the way to go. Don't misunderstand me. I'm, I'm not for that. That wasn't fun to be a part of that. Um, but accountability, man, how you hold people accountable. Because if you don't hold people accountable, it's hard to make them better. So that's my challenge right now is I continue to try to uh, uh, keep myself involved in the life of young people and help them achieve and grow. Um, that's, that's the challenge. Uh, we'll get there. We'll figure it out. That's, I'm not worried about that. We'll figure it out. We got good dudes in that locker room. But as far as your questions for today, it was bad. We got out of the way. And that's that's not acceptable. All right, time for one more. Do you have any updates on um, injury? Like, Bella, Rizzo, and RJ? Yeah, RJ's in concussion protocol. And uh, so he, you know, that's a complicated animal there. Uh, Noah, uh, I don't see Noah back in the foreseeable future. Uh, uh, and and Rasul just he he gutted it out at George Mason. I, I I couldn't believe he played. I told you guys after the game, I didn't expect him to play, and he came and got me on game day. He says I'm going to play. I'm good. Um, and uh, you know he was, excuse me, uh, he he his leg was like this morning. I was like, uh, and he tried to give it a go shoot around, but he couldn't move. Not not fair to. It, it, that's where an adult and Dave, our trainer, who's been here for 100 years, um, that's where adults have to step in and protect young people from themselves. And, and Dave came to me and said, Frank, I can't do it. I said, good. That's what we need to do today. Great. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Thanks, Coach. My Thanks. Well. Weeks and Matt Cross here. You have to go ahead with your questions whenever you're ready to go. Um, I'm all right. I mean, I'm just working on getting my weight back. I practiced for like 30 minutes for the first time yesterday. Um, so I'm just tired. Just trying to get my wind back, my legs back. Um, I'm up, I'm up like a couple pounds now. So, I mean, I'm getting there, but I'm fine. I'm just tired. Did it take a little extra out of you to be able to have a career high in 28 points and do what you were able to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, um, you know, my teammates were finding me and um, just made, we just made good plays, good passes, and it just happened to come. Um, but I think it was just a, a team effort uh, of getting good passes to me. TJ, what was it like having Matt back after not having him for the last two games? It was so great. I feel like he had a physical presence because Matt's always going to do the gritty stuff, get a rebound or bully somebody to the paint. So I felt like we could be more physical with the other team and hopefully get some more stops and rebounds. Does this kind of get you guys a little energized, sort of knowing what he went through to him out there doing that? Is, is that almost a motivation? Like, well, he's tough for doing this. I got to put my whole chest in that, too. Of course, because like, if he's fighting, then we all got to fight a little extra harder for him just to pick him up because he's not 100%. So if I see him fighting, I'm going to fight 150% for him. For either of you guys, it seemed like every time you got close, they found a way to hit a three, make a big shot. Was it frustrating? Stop, and all we needed to do was make a stop. Um, no, it was definitely frustrating. I mean, they were hitting, they were hitting their shots, but at the end of the day, they're a lot of them are open. I mean, just we're not no nowhere on rotations. 
Um, they just pretty much got whatever they want when they wanted. So it was, it was frustrating because we were getting some good stuff on offense, um, but just zero, not a lot of defense going on today. You mentioned the good stuff on offense. How, how much of that was coming from the way that P.I. was kind of working today and things that like he was really settled in and, and just really efficient with the way he was passing the ball? Yeah, I mean, I think he's, he's, getting, he's getting better on being patient. I mean, he's really good at getting to the spot. Um, getting to the elbow, um, like deep into their into their defense to to make it easier on the passes and get the ball where we want. So I mean, I feel like he is really doing well um, on setting up our offense as of lately. I don't know what you think. I think he's getting better with experience. Yeah. The more he plays, the more he feels more comfortable out there, so he's able to pick apart the defenses. Going back to home, TJ. I know you have your own unique situation going on. How are you feeling? And how has that been? I feel better. It doesn't, like, when I heard it, it would hurt to walk, lay down, all that, but I'm feeling better. I went to treatment, ice tub, all that, so I'm feeling good. I think I feel 100%. So you had to play sort of the, the point guard offense at GA or with John did sit down. How much of a different position is that with what you guys are, are, are doing, or is that something that you have done enough to feel comfortable being in that spot? Uh, we knew going in. No one Russell might not play, so coach put me in practice with it, so I felt more comfortable getting to the elbow or looking through the defenses and stuff. So I kind of felt comfortable out there. I did mess up once. I ran the two lane, but I was point guard. So. Honest mistake, but I'm good. Matt, do you mind taking us through your week and what it took for you to be able to play today and uh, play the way that you did? Yeah, I mean, um, obviously I didn't go to the Duquesne game. Because um, you know, I was in the hospital for a little while, but um, then I got back. I wasn't in practice, and then um, yes, the day before yesterday, um, I just got my first like lift in and kind of like a 20-minute individual with the coach. Um, just started kind of getting food down, weighing myself in every day. They're making sure I get fluids and stuff like that. And then yesterday was like my first time practicing for like 30 minutes of it, and um, I mean then then we're here today. So I mean that's kind of just been the week. What kind of foods do you have to eat when you're in? Um, lately, it's just been like soft, easy, digestible stuff like fruits, uh, yogurts, um, applesauce, stuff like that. Um, so not a lot of like, not a lot of heavy stuff, protein stuff. So, but it's getting better, and um, I'm getting to the point where I'm kind of able to eat that stuff. So hopefully that that pushes the weight up too. Um, but yeah, no, that's just how it's been lately. I guess time for one more story. Is there a <laughs> timeline of when your stomach can just be a healthy be back to normal you can eat the things you were eating before then? Um, yeah, I mean, it's just kind of a day-by-day -day thing, like trying things and just seeing if it hurts. I mean, I'm, I'm almost back to the point where everything is just kind of like the main protein stuff um, that you kind of need, um, exactly just like chicken and stuff like that. So I'm just waiting to be able to uh, eat stuff like that. So I'd say the next couple of days, um, um, that will that will be it. But I think the biggest thing is just was hydration too. So I'm just trying to kill kill the liquids and hopefully get at least my water weight back before I even worry about getting the little weight that the food will bring. So yeah. Great. Thanks guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.